We are back at it for week two. Uh, this weekend, I did a lot of resting since I wasn't feeling so well, and that actually worked out all right because it was raining a lot here in California, so there wasn't much that I could really do. Um, the kids today, my eighth graders, are looking at their case for the first time. Seventh graders keep working on, I don't know, something that um, I don't have as much passion about, to be completely honest, and hopefully someday I can develop something that will help do that. This morning I'm uh, pretty much ready. Like I like to make my copies the week before. Uh, as the days progress, I like to make sure the plan is in place for the next week. Obviously I need to adjust things on the fly, I will, but I feel pretty good. So I'm here early again. Uh, I'll probably practice my speech since it's happening this Friday. Uh, I'm getting a little bit nervous about it, to be honest. I'm not super nervous. I'm comfortable speaking in front of people, but I haven't really done it in a long time and I'm not sure I've ever really spoken in front of you know two groups of 500 or so before so I'll probably get that practice in so here's the story of Mr. Boylan um, he was my eighth grade English teacher and before I get into kind of what happened with him I'll just tell you that eighth grade was a really really rough year for me I would probably argue one of the worst years of my life um, I have a lot of things going on inside. My parents and I were fighting all the time. They had divorced and I was young, so things were not getting any better. Probably that age of me wanting to be independent. So I was pushing back a lot. Um, I was not doing well in school. I didn't care about much of anything, if I'm being honest. So uh, Mr. Boylan had this assignment where we had to write 50 poems over the course of the quarter. And he was a great guy in the sense that he just gave it to us and gave us what we needed and let us go about doing it. And then we were supposed to turn them all in. And I spent most of the class period where we were supposed to be writing them just talking and hanging out with friends. And when it came time to turn things in, I turned in five of the 50 poems. And so I knew that I failed. And um, you know he knew that I failed. But he also had this thing where you had to figure out your own grade. Um, and so I sat and did the math of it all and it was very obvious. I think I had like a .8 or something. And then you had to go up and tell him. And so I walked up to Mr. Boylan and I said, I have a D, which I knew I didn't. And Mr. Boylan, I think, to me it sounded like loud enough for everybody to hear. Uh, probably wasn't, probably was just me. But Mr. Boylan said, uh, no, Mr. Brown, you failed. You got an F, Mr. Brown. That was the only F I've ever gotten in school, was in eighth grade English, which is what I teach. So I went back to my class, uh, my class, I went back to my desk and sat down and just started bawling and crying and, you know, couldn't keep track of anything. And, you know, eventually the bell rang and I, I walked out and I walked to, uh, to my math class. And in my math class, I was dazed and totally disconnected and and this was a teacher who did not express really any care for us I mean I'm, I'm in the middle of crying right in class my eyes are sobbing red she didn't say a word to me and then partway through the class a student walks in hands a note to her and she looks at it and then looks at, <clears throat> excuse me looks at me and says Mr. Brown you need it in the office so I grab my stuff, I don't really care, to be honest. And so I start to walk to the office and before I can turn the corner, Mr. Boylan meets me. We go into this closet that was a makeshift office. There were no windows. There was one desk, two chairs. We sat across from each other. Couldn't look him in the eye, I was so embarrassed. And the first thing he says to me is he just says, uh, Look, Mr. Brown, I know you're having problems at home. And then I peeked at him because I don't know how he knows that. I didn't know how he knew that. I didn't know how he heard that. But he says, I know you're having problems at home. Um, I just want you to know this grade is not gonna be that big of a deal. You got a lesson you need to learn from it, but in the end, it's not gonna be something that really affects you. It's not gonna affect your academics. Let me know if you need anything. And I couldn't look at him the whole time, but we left the room, walked away. I still got an F, he gave me an F. 
I earned an F. He didn't give me an F. I, I earned it. I deserved it. But for Mr. Boylan, I, I take from that some serious lessons about not only me growing up and learning about responsibility, but, but me as a teacher. From him, um, there are kind of two pillars to my teaching. I want students to know that I really do care about them. But I also believe in high expectations that shouldn't be lowered because a student is unwilling to meet them. I'm not exaggerating when I say that Mr. Boylan saved my life. And I think about him all the time. So just a quick lunchtime check-in. Uh, eighth graders are doing great, man. They seem really interested in the trial. Been reading pretty quietly, trying to understand what's going on. Um, been good conversation. I'm, I'm actually really excited about uh, getting going on this. Seventh graders are doing fine. Um, Obviously my passion is not as much there, but it's not because of the kids, it's because of the curriculum. Uh, and also just, you know, thinking about that story I told you about Mr. Boylan. I mean, that's probably why my heart is really a lot with middle school kids and eighth graders in particular. So gonna have some lunch, get through the rest of the day, go to that meeting, positive behavior inter intervention system. That's what it stands for. And, uh, and then get home and practice my speech. So I ended up helping out the seventh graders create a claim. I uh, had to really narrow it down a little bit. A lot of them wanted to use their uh, reasoning in the claim rather than saving it for later on in their essay. So that was a really good learning point that they had and kind of made it through the day. It was, uh, it was good with the kids, good conversations overall. So looking forward to tomorrow, a little bit more insight into their various uh, cases and kind of helping them kind of map out a big picture of what they're going to do. There's lots of pieces they need to work through. This is way more complicated than just, uh, you know, taking some notes and writing an essay, which I think is really helpful for them more so than, than doing that. I just, the greater thinking, critical thinking skills that happen in something like this project uh, a little harder for me to manage and put together, but considerably more rewarding. It's been a great day.